Very good. Well, officially, welcome, a warm welcome to everybody joining this webinar here today, joining the webinar about the value increase of uh, organizations by leveraging emotional intelligence. Really nice to see people joining from all over the world. Um, I am located in Austria, in Europe, and I see familiar names. Welcome back. And also nice to see new names uh, from different regions. So very nice to have the mix here. And as some might join for the first time a webinar with Six Seconds, let me introduce me briefly and tell you a little bit about Six Seconds as well. So my name is Maria Olsom. I'm the corporate manager uh, at Six Seconds Europe and also EQ, senior EQBIS consultant for Six Seconds Europe. I'm also an ICF PCC coach uh, and uh, part of the Six Seconds organization for over 15 years in different parts of the world. Uh, Six Seconds, as maybe this is the first time you're joining our webinar, just a little bit briefly, Six Seconds actually is the first and largest global network about emotional intelligence with over 10,000 people certified uh, experts around the world in over 150 countries. Uh, it's also the world's leading provider of emotional intelligence assessment, training, certification, and coaching. And we partner with organizations across the globe over 25 over 25 years already. It's a global nonprofit organization, and we dedicate a lot into research and development of these tools and the topic emotional intelligence to make this um, implemented. And we want to reach 1 billion people practicing emotional intelligence by 2038. Um, today, we are here um, to discuss the value of leveraging emotional intelligence in organizations. Uh, and again, as I mentioned that before, this is um, a webinar, Zoom room, so I cannot um, participate actively in speaking, but I would like to still have this interactive, this webinar, so please use the chat so we still can um, communicate with each other and not just having a monologue from my side, but really adding value this time we have here together. Um, and for the people who might join in later, who watch the recording, also welcome to the people who watch the recording at this point. Let's start with a question to set the context of our time here by using already the chat. Think about your work or what you're hearing at your workplace and ask yourself, what is new and what is challenging these days, considering your workplace, your work environment? What are you noticing? Just use the chat on your right hand side so we can really communicate with each other in the chat. What is new and what is challenging at your workplace that you're noticing during this period? Okay, very interesting. Noel, thank you for joining. I see your message. Thanks for having me. Um, well, I see new hybrid environments. Very clearly. I see some people writing me private in chat as well. That also works. Working with people who are difficult. What do you mean with difficult, Rosemary? In what sense difficult? I see people are chat. Oh, somebody writes here. Finding purpose. Anna Sophia, thanks for joining. Finding purpose. People are trying to find purpose. The challenge of hybrid environment, connecting and maintaining strong connections. Absolutely. Okay, 
promoting and accelerating of diversity and inclusion policies fail to increase understanding without understanding. Yeah, good point. And I see here people who sent me private in the chat as well. Being overwhelmed. Insecurity. Deep and uncertainty. Complexity. Continuous change. Absolutely. ChatGPT, somebody sends me privately. Absolutely. ChatGPT. Well, thank you for thank you everybody for these. And I think we could go on and on and on. What is it telling us by just reading our very quick uh, words here? What are we noticing? Absolutely. I think we clearly, clearly can say by just considering that what we are experiencing in that small group, that organizations are defined by uncertainty, by change, and by complexity. They need to adapt, recalibrate, resize, and reinvent, which means that really leaders are facing these turbulent workplaces like never before. And it's not just the complexity, it's a combination of this deep uncertainty, the global interconnection, the rapid pace that makes it impossible to actually follow old ways of doing things, old ways of planning. Employees, expectations have changed. Employees are seeking flexibility, autonomy, and as Anna Sophia wrote here, purpose, meaning from work. They care actually more about companies' values. And considering all of this, thank you, there's one more. It is valuable for people who cannot watch seminars in different cities. The, dis the treasure, the distance, yes, it is so valuable. And at the same time, it's a big challenge as well as we had also the relationship piece. So we are really experiencing in these times, we're experiencing really like never before, these decision makers experience a challenge and we need to kind of rebuild the approach they're using to make this work again. But the question is actually now, as this has like not been, we always had experienced change in the past. It's not the first time and the whole evolution we're facing change, but it's, it's different this time. And I think what needs to be different is also these two questions. How do we go beyond these small tweaks to the system and instead set up a really more resilient, inclusive and sustainable future? And how do we not only survive this uncertainty, but really thrive and make a difference. So by just looking at these facts and honestly analyzing the situation we are facing as business leaders do, it's really time to get to the core. And that also means to admit and to understand that these problems that we're facing are not just economic and rational, but also emotional. So it's not a surprise, actually. I'm going to share screen now. Um, let me share screen for a second. Completely forgot. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I feel like I want to be closer to you in the webinar, not just a small picture. And as I don't see you, actually, let's share now my slides. Just a second. Let's get back to my slides. Um, yes, what we said, it's not a surprise that also the economic forum has listed emotional still intelligence as one of the top skilled required in the 21st century. It's no longer something that's just nice to have or 
have a kind of a sticker at the door <laughs> to tick the box. It's rather a vital skill to support this period and to succeed entering, su entering successfully into this fourth industrial revolution, which is also placed with automation, artificial intelligence at its core, at its center. So we just heard the facts, what's going on. We heard also the need that with these facts that it's not just rational, it's rational and emotional, the challenge that we need to face, brings us to the point, and another fact which is scary, even we know we need to consider also emotions and emotional intelligence to overcome that, globally, Emotional intelligence is still declining. It's shocking, but it's also natural. In difficult times, we tend to look, humans tend to look inwards rather than outwards. This is uh, from um, the latest State of the Heart report, which is the largest uh, research um, done by Six Seconds about emotional intelligence. So what is that? So let's have a look actually of what this means. So what if this decline of emotional intelligence continues? What impact does it have also on our organizations? Let me go back actually. What do you think, here's the chat again. What do you think is the impact if this development continues? Just take a minute for yourself considering the situation we are in. Just stop sharing quickly, as I don't see that. I need to make sure I see your chat. Any spontaneous reaction? What's the consequence if we continue on this path? Less engagement, Robin. Uh, mm -hmm, thank you. What else? We become more disconnected. How interesting. Less well-being. Absolutely, Erica, very nice to see you here. Great, you can join our webinar. Oh, I love that. What was it also connected here? How interesting is how interesting that AI is now needed as a leadership trait when in the US all children's program and public televisions needs to be classified as EA. And yet this is decline. Mm. Yes, very interesting. Very good point, Deborah. Less collaboration. Great points, absolutely. So let's let's have a look together of a very interesting, I even call it vicious cycle of what does this decline cost an organization? So let's have a look here. We see here it is somehow messy, but otherwise actually not so messy, chart that shows the business cost of low emotional intelligence. And you see that some of these costs are quite obvious, which is on the right-hand side here, you see the loss in revenue, loss productivity, higher turnover, higher healthcare, like more sick leave, as we had also that topic before, somebody mentioned in the chat, the well-being. Absolutely. So this is quite obvious, yet, most leaders don't look to like to look at these hidden costs of low emotional intelligence, which when we start here by low emotional intelligence, we do know that when people are more less engaged, as we mentioned, let's start with that. We could start anywhere, as we see, it's a circle. Less engaged, people feel disconnected. And feeling disconnected also leads to bad communication, leads to lower trust, first of all, feeling disconnected. How much do I trust somebody I'm not connected with? Leads to bad communication. We are missing out. We are missing out information. We are not getting the full picture, which leads to another way of damaged trust and poor collaboration. And poor collaboration. I mean, how, how do we really, with poor trust, 
poor communication, how can we be productive and engage other team members or employees in the organization? So it leads also to a drop of engagement and low engagement blocks again also, I think we need to consider that as well at this point, blocks innovation and creativity and leads to avoidable mistakes and bloated payroll costs, not to, not to forget. And in return, that leads to even lower trust and higher stress, and the cycle goes on. And here as well, the higher stress, as you mentioned also in the chat, the well-being. I see another chat here. Sorry, it's a bit tricky in the stress and burnout. Yes, exactly. And I think if we look just at some of the research that's been published lately, my goodness, stress and burnout are there at the top, which is part of that vicious circle. And in return, that just, it's a spiral. It's a spiral that adds up and damages a brand's reputation that makes it even harder to recruit, to keep star talents and to attract new customers. So it continues and goes on and it goes on and goes on. And I think the fact that tell us what's going on today, it gets harder and harder to ignore this part and leaders and organizations need to just uh, accept the fact that it's a change. And we know humans are not so in favor for change. Also when neuroscience shows us. So this is what happens if we don't do anything about it and keep doing what you're doing. But then looking at the other side of the coin, as we talk about emotional intelligence, if we look at this fact, oops, my slides. If we look at this fact, this is also done from the research uh, from the state of the heart report from six seconds. It's the graphic shows here a random sample from 140 countries. Uh, and it's the world's largest study of emotional intelligence. Let me explain to you briefly. Here on the vertical axis, uh, you see success factors, which is success in that is divided into four categories of effectiveness, relationship, well-being, and quality of life. And then the horizontal axis is the score of emotional intelligence. So very clearly, what this research showed us again that actually emotional intelligence is more than twice as predictive of performance as IQ. I'm not saying we don't need IQ. It's as important, the rational skills, but it's twice as predictive. So we see here the higher score of emotional intelligence a leader has, the higher success factor is going up. And the other outcome also shows us that organizations that prioritize emotional intelligence are 20 times as likely to be high performing. What is that telling us considering what we've discussed so far? Do these numbers surprise you? Can you use the chat again if you have a comment about this or a question or just a comment? Do these surprise you? Shocking, Deborah. Thank you. Absolutely shocking. Where well, we see actually how these developments going in an opposite direction, but nevertheless, gives us an amazing opportunity, an amazing opportunity by having that awareness to really making a difference, a sustainable difference, difference now. So research is actually really clear that emotional intelligence is a key differentiator for the most successful leaders, teams, and organizations all over the world. Across industry and company sizes, Research links emotional intelligence to better business outcomes like higher employee engagement, lower turnover and absenteeism and greater profitability. So, but let's discuss how to get this value. So 
it's a shocking fact, but let's do something about it, right? We are not accepting it. In order not just to make this a theory here for you, just take a pause again and think for yourself, because we're talking about change again. Huh? Think about a time your own performance went up or down. How was that time? What made it go up or down? Please use the chat again. I know, I would love, yeah, what drove that change? I would love to hear you. I would love to see you. Uh, Anna Sophia, thank you. Relationships and colleagues. Getting overwhelmed by own emotions. Absolutely. What drove that change? I guess getting overwhelmed by own emotions is when performance went down. Feeling valued and the sense of meaning. I see here also somebody who sent in the other chat. I felt like people believe in me, feeling valued and the sense of meaning, absolutely. Had a clear vision, somebody else. I felt engaged and trusted. Ah, oh, and Deborah, during, oops, I need to go back. Um, chat. When I felt really engaged at that moment, I felt I could express my value, better relationships. Right, thank you. One more. Self, safe environment, yes. Psychological safety, better relationship. Mm, thank you. Feeling devaluated by the person I had reported to. So the performance went down. I imagine now, right, uh, Norel? Wow. I think just looking at these comments here from our group, it's the emotional part, it's the emotional intelligence part that drove that change either way. Values disaligned. Absolutely. Person hood versus performance values disaligned absolutely so when we consider these points here actually what we clearly see these are connected to people and to leadership and this is why we're going to look at another couple of facts and data and research why this is so important in order to change that dynamic, in order to reverse uh, that process. We do also know from research that we see here, start that starting with leadership is key when we want to make that reverse. Starting with leadership. Leaderships who score higher on emotional intelligence are far more likely to have higher performance outcomes and create more economic value. We see here leaders who score higher. Yes, it's seven times as likely to have high leadership performance and outcomes. And we see this increase in 20% over performance of yearly earnings goals. I'll let you read yourself. And another key so this is just about the leadership and all your comments were connected to leadership, which leads also one key benefit of a higher EQ leader means that he or she engages employee in a much more effective way. And now my slides are stuck in a much more effective way. And we know we need engaged leaders to make that happen. But at the same time, when we look at current research, unfortunately, that's from the US. In the US right now, only 21% of employees are highly engaged. 
I just see a comment just to add here. Personhood, mind blowing, mind blowing to think that leadership could promote collaboration between managers and laborers. Absolutely, Deborah, it is mind blowing and it's shocking. That impact, that influence, and often I think leaders are not aware and organizations are not aware what difference that can make. So we see that 23% of higher profits for business units when engaged employees and 76% of employees engagement scores are predicted by emotional intelligence. And just, I think it's last week or two weeks ago, the latest research from the Workplace Report 2023 from Gallup gave us another shocking fact. They consider non-engaged employees, they define as non-engaged employees are quiet quitting. They're psychologically unattached to their work and company because their engagement um, needs are not fully met. They're putting time, but not energy or passion into their work. So that's what, how they, they call not engaged. And the fact is just in Europe, Consider as we are, as I'm in Europe, we are in Europe, 72% uh, of employees are not engaged. What's your emotional reaction to this fact? 72% in Europe of employees are currently not engaged. That's the old school company loyalty by engaged employees could increase profit is unimaginable in the US. That's the old school company loyalty by engaged employees could increase. Yes, the profit could increase tremendously. Absolutely. Any other comments? Yeah. So one effect, another effect of high employee engagement, which sometimes is not so obvious, but it's also a fact, is also better customer engagement. Oops, better customer engagement, which means when it comes to the customers, more emotional intelligence in the organization drives more employee engagement and drives better customer outcomes, which has a direct impact of the top line results. Here are just some facts again, which I think tells us the story. Just when we see, I find also very interesting, these loyal customers are likely to stay with companies after even experiencing a negative experience, 46 times higher. And a 5% increase, only 5% increase in customer loyalty results in 25% increase in profit. And I think when it comes to customer engagement, I always believe that the way we treat ourselves and our colleagues is the way we treat customers. And that's the way also customers experience their customer experience. So if we sum that up from what we just heard, let's sum that up quickly. How does emotional intelligence then create value in an organization? What separates these exception leaders? We know now is emotional intelligence. That's why the right leadership, we know it's seven times higher likely that a leader with emotional intelligence also is a leader that gives high performance outcomes, impacts the employee engagement, and that's at the core for the organizational performance. And then we know a healthy organizational climate matters, yet hybrid and promote work adds emotional logistical complexity. As you mentioned at the beginning of our webinar already, organizations that prioritize EQ 
are 20 times as likely to be high performance and leads also to loyal customers, uh, better relationship with customers, which strengthen that trust and drives loyalty. And as I said, just a 5% increase in customer loyalty results in a 25% increase in um, profit and it increases the overall business value of an organization. It sounds so simple and so clear, right? <laughs> Let's see a question here in the chat. Uh, is it a question or a comment? Uh, thank you. We see here. Oops, my mouse is just a little frozen. 100% agree. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, okay. But what does increased value actually mean? We have here increased business value. And what drives that? So let's go back to your own pen and paper again. And consider these questions. What would an increased business value mean in your case? And what could is first action steps towards that goal? We heard all these facts. We know it's important. But what does it mean in your situation? And what is a place you want to get started? Can I maybe share just small examples? Use the chat again or your paper. It's nice to share with each other in the webinar. What do you think where would be the place to start and what this increase in business value means in your case? Okay, I see here in the chat in my private message. Creating a, a work environment where stress is reduced. Okay. Looking in the more forward to going to work. Mm -hmm. Any other comments in the shared chat? Start, uh, Robin, thank you. Start with the leadership and increase their in queue first. Building, beginning to build trust in labor, management, communication. Wow. I see we have experienced EQ experts also in this webinar. Very exciting. Thank you for joining. Great input. Okay, then let's look together at, just close the chat that I see better my slide. Let's look together at a realistic solution, how to implement emotional intelligence in four stages. And like mentioned in the chat already, oh, actually before, I want to challenge you with something else. Rather than thinking um, of emotional intelligence as something to learn about or kind of to do a one-off training, try to use it as a method for building a winning culture, because this is what we need these days. And that's why leaders go first. A possible start and a highly recommended start from our side is really start by using a robust assessment and coaching to learn if you're the leader about your emotional intelligence and how to leverage it as a leader. We know leading starts with ourselves, role model, and then build strategic alignment. Get really crystal clear that these skills are a must have, not any more nice to have, and show your people why this impacts the top and bottom line. It's not this pink, fluffy thing that you're talking about. It's facts. 
that you're bringing in. This then again leads to the next phase, building capacity. What I mean with this is develop your internal champions and experts. This is not possible as a one man, one woman change process. You need your companions. You need internal champions and experts who will infuse um, emotional intelligence into the culture of the organization. Kind of, they need to be equipped and support. Next phase, then time is ready to really um, not to see this as an embedded in embed emotional intelligence in the organization, but not, as I mentioned before, as a tick the box training program, one of the catalog offers. Then honestly, it's a waste of your time, a waste of the organization's time and money and effort. But emotional intelligence needs to be put into the system and the process for every stage of talent development uh, from selection to advancement to really make it part of the culture and to make emotional intelligence a core competency and ideally measured and applied on all levels of the organizations, no matter it's from the new entry to the CEOs. It's really, that own, that's the only way that it really leads into shaping a culture. And shaping a culture also means that it's an ongoing process. It's an ongoing process. And ideally, to by use coaching, ongoing events, small bite-size events, coaching, yeah, in every element that to keep these skills at the top of people's mind, that it gets real, that it gets human and it becomes like normal and authentic, the dialogue. We don't wanna, we know how it is when people try to pretend to be something or do something. We need to create an environment where emotions are not only recognized, but also leveraged as a competitive advantage. Only if it's really embedded, then emotional intelligence is key to unlock a more engaged, productive, and loyal workforce. So, any questions? Oh, I see. Chat, questions? Sounds like a dream. I believe this is the cornerstone to change. Absolutely. And let's this dream become reality, Deborah. It shouldn't stay a dream. And I am experiencing, I'm in that lucky situation where I experience organizations where this process is truly lived and embedded successfully, um, which makes a clear difference. Okay, any questions at this point? Then let's, sorry, I just got stuck again. <laughs> then let's look at this chart again. How do you want to get started? Oh, I see, I love to see this in my company culture. Yes, you can make a difference. How do we get a corporate buy-in? I believe this is the corner. So how do we get a corporate buy-in? Yes. What do you think? Use the chat. What do you think? How you can um, see a, a corporate buy-in? Any ideas in the chat that you want to share with each other? I know that there are people in this webinar who have also done this before. Meanwhile, you think about your ideas, I can share my idea and my experience. What I showed you before as well, ah, are you able to share cases of, yes, we do have cases. And I know that Vito, my colleague is joining. Uh, and please Vito, if you could join the link to the EQ business cases, in case we don't get it so quickly, Six Seconds has done business cases and research that is published and is available. And also, we have the business case of that's the latest, that's the whole 
a document, not case by case, but there's also cases included in this document that Vito, thank you, Vito, just shared here uh, in the chat, um, that really gives you data, that gives you data um, and gives you company names and organizations where this is really lived. And I think a core key point also mentioned that I mentioned before in the process, and you see here again, is build capacity. Try to find a strong influencer. Um, I think, yeah, leaders go first. The better we walk the talk uh, and role model. But we need um, decision makers that are supporting this. Absolutely. So here's, um, so where would you, somebody else in the chat has experience or where you want to get started? Yeah. Okay, I see here a comment in the chat. We started with the queue already. And now, the culture change is the challenge. Yes, it's not an easy process. And I think what we also what we also see here, sorry, just a second, oops. What we also see here in this circular process I show you on the slide, it's important that we are aware, first of all, emotional intelligence, it's not an overnight exercise. <laughs> And to create really this flow, we need to remember that change is not a linear process and to, to implement and change a culture is not a linear process. It can be really messy. And that's why it's so important to consider what's the current situation in your organization, in the organization you're working with, What's there really going on now? And then checking in what's the most suitable approach for them, considering all these elements, all these elements. Because the important thing is to have people at the center, to have people at the center, because we know that emotions drive people and people drive performance. And it starts with the individual, and it's a ripple effect that leads to the organization. So one of the biggest mistakes we can do these days is to use our old ways and old methods of thinking and old methods to really make a difference in the next generation. So we need new skills, we need new tools to make sure we do not miss out and we do not leave emotions out of it or outside the building, office building, outside the doorstep, but really involve it because it's critical information, it's contagious, it's essential data and message that unlocks successful teams. So by combining the power of emotion and objectively measured quality data, we can make sustainable decisions leading our organizations into the future, into future, where I think, just remembering the comments, in the future where I think a human workplace to thrive is so important, where people can contribute to make a difference with a purpose, where people can add value in their unique, authentic style, not the burnout, engage others and create this ripple effect that not just leads to higher performance, but also to create a sustainable ground for the future for our next generations. So keeping, if you remember one thing from this webinar, but I wanna give you away, and if it's only at least that sentence, emotions drive people and people drive performance. Um, and want to thank you for joining. If you have any questions, I'm still here. I stop sharing now. Please use the chat. Please use the chat if you have any questions at this point or anything you want um, us to send you or share with you. I'm actually also sharing now my 
email address, which I forgot. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for joining. I give the thank you back. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, thank you. Any questions, feel free to just add, add in the chat or feel free to reach out to myself or to Six Seconds and download the papers you would like to have, and I'm happy to have a chat with you. Once again, all the best. Try to remember, emotions drive people, people drive performance. And I also want to give you the question on your way. What's the first step you're going to do to make that difference? Have a wonderful day. Take care. See you in the next webinar. Bye-bye.